Hey everybody, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. This is Kana, you're in my corner. Starting off today with a very special guest. We had a very special guest yesterday. And we're continuing the Peace Walker awesomeness today. Up today is actually Archon, which is very Thanks. awesome. Our Christopher Randolph, thank you so much for joining the show. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. And now, I'm curious, you've been a part of the series for so long. Does it kind of surprise you that it's continued throughout the years? You know, it is amazing. Um, it really is amazing, and, it, and it, you know, it's all down to the fan base, I think. I, I, I certainly, when we started, I certainly never thought it was going to be like this. And I don't think anyone who was at that first session in, what was it, 98 or something, ever thought that this was going to turn into what it turned into. So, um, but now, you know, it just keeps rolling along, and, and it, it doesn't really surprise me now because I, I, I realize the, the huge impact it seems to have, you know, across the world, which is it's really amazing and quite gratifying. It is pretty fantastic, and, you know, your character specifically is, is kind of one of the characters you can't go a game without. You know, <laughs> you, you, you start to rely on him so much. Have, have you noticed that? Yeah, well, it, you know, and that's wonderful. And, uh, um, yeah, that's that's really fantastic. I, I, it makes me – I'm very happy about that. And, and uh, the, uh, you know, the connection to the player uh, is – it's a great thing. I think that's a great thing. And one of the great things that this game does is, is you really get linked in to the game uh, in a wonderful way. I'm glad I can be a part of that. Oh, definitely. And I was actually, uh, when we were talking to David Hader yesterday, I was telling him how uh, Metal Gear Solid series was actually the first one to make me cry because I, I'm fairly, mm. yeah, I'm fairly young. So when I played, you know, the second one, I think I was only about in my, my younger teens, only about 13 or 14. So I got to a, a very pivotal moment uh, for, for your character specifically. And yeah. That just made me ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were there were some intense moments in that game. I, I I know people have a lot of problems with with two, but at the same time, I you know I thought some of the storytelling was was pretty powerful. You know. It seems that as the years have gone by, the storytelling has just gotten more and more you know emotional and, and dramatic, such as the case with four. Would you agree? Yes, I would totally agree. And uh, you know that's. That's Mr. Kojima, I think. He obviously is a, a real believer in the epic story, um, which, which I think is great. I'm, I, you know, I, I'm also a writer. I'm, I'm not at the level that David Hayter is at, but, I, but I, I certainly am a big believer in the story. And I think it's really great. And I think that, I think that the Metal Gear has really influenced uh, a lot of other games because it seems to me that more and more games are coming out with more and more involved stories. And it's not just about, you know, blowing people up or, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And I can actually understand that because I, I usually won't play a game if I don't have some connection to a character or there's some story there because blowing people up is fun if you're bored, but it doesn't yeah. have much to it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And, and you know, I think people, we, we need stories. I, I think it's a fascinating thing, actually, to me. I, I think that human beings are sort of hardwired for stories in, in their lives, and I think it's been that way since the very, very beginning, you know, in the caves, um, uh, you know, eons ago. So I think it's great. I think it's great that games have taken that on. And now I'm curious, I also asked this question uh, yesterday to David, but – I was wondering because the fans were all fooled that Metal Gear Solid 4 was the last, the 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 great big you know last game. Were you under that impression at all? Well, we were certainly. Uh, I mean that that was certainly what we were told. I, I think, you know, I, I mean I remember the, the the night the night that that was released worldwide, and and you know I I went to a a release thing in Times Square and people were lined up for seven or eight blocks in the blistering July heat. And it, it just seemed pretty clear to me that um, there's such an, an enormous love of this whole franchise that I, I suspected that it would continue in some form or other. Um, but, you know, you, you never know. You never know. I mean, it is it, it does seem to be going on, but it also seems to be moving in different directions. Does it seem that way to you? 
It does, actually, because, you know, they said specifically that this was the end of, you know, Snake Saga with uh, 4. Yeah. So yeah. with Peace Walker, it seems like they're expanding the actual story. And I don't even know what they're doing with Rising yet. I'm trying not to think of what it is because I don't want to get my expectations up or down. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Rising seems to be a, a big mystery. It's certainly a mystery to me, and I, I believe it's a mystery to David, too, because neither of us have been contacted about it. But but that doesn't mean that we won't necessarily be involved. It's just sometimes we don't get called until fairly late in the process. Um, but maybe not. You know, it may be all about Raiden and, and a whole new cast of characters. I, I'm just not sure. It might be. I mean, last time we talked to Quinn, which I believe was about a month or two ago, he hadn't been contacted either, at least that he could tell us. So. Okay. Well, actually, that's, that's really good news because um, uh, that means they're still, they're still working on the process. And uh, um, I don't know. It, I think it's, it's very exciting. We're, we, I think everyone, including the people involved with it, are waiting to see what it's going to be, you know. Oh, definitely. And when you guys were called on to do Peace Walker, was that a big surprise for you? Uh, you know, it was. Um, it was. You know, I, 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 uh, I live in New York, not Los Angeles now. And, um, and so, you know, I, I go out there to do the – I go to L.A. to do the recordings when we do them. And, and, um, and then I come back here and go on with my life. And so, uh, you know, it's always a bit of a surprise when the phone call comes. And, and it's also extremely exciting because, I, you know, I love doing this work and I love the, the people involved with the franchise. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm always waiting for that phone call, you know. Oh, definitely. I can understand that. Franchises <laughs> are awesome for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will say, though, that did you expect to be a different character this time around? Well, you know, that was really interesting. I, I, I did not expect it, but it, it turned out to be uh, a fascinating exercise. I, I think it's, it's not really a secret in the game is out now that, that the, the character I play in Peace Walker is actually Otacon's father. Um, and that was really fun because uh, we sort of had to, in a way, kind of reverse engineer a voice um, you know, sort of going from Otacon and thinking, well, what what would his father sound like? It would be a little bit like Otacon, but definitely not exactly the same. And and how you know what adjustments do we make with that? Right, and I think that's actually very interesting. That was actually going to be my next question because yeah. I, I would think from you know game to game you'd want to give him his own personality, and it's very interesting to know that Otacon's kind of getting more of a history lesson. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I think over the years, you know, Otacon's sort of <laughs> bizarre family history has has really um, expanded and opened up, and and all his romantic entanglements and all the issues with his parents and his sister and all of that stuff, um, which is fantastic. And and then to to sort of go back to you know even back before you know when he was just a twinkle in the eye. Um, of his father was uh, was really pretty great, um, and and you know I I really admire the consistency of the storylines because you know it takes a lot of people to put put a a project like this together and and uh, to, you know to be able to keep it all straight is a, a real accomplishment. Um, so I think they do a great job with that. Oh, definitely, and that's awesome. And for those of you out there who haven't picked up your copy, I'm going to threaten you to do so because I'm sure it's an awesome game. And we're going to take a very short break here on 91.8 The Fan, but keep it tuned to your favorite station. Everything you want, nothing you don't. Oh, golly, I'm bored. Have you considered listening to some music, Mr. Ooze, sir? It's time to pay the piper. <laughs> As fun as destroying the command center may be, sir, might I suggest 918 The Fan? Lots of amusing teen DJs and the like. Hmm, a teenager with a big mouth. Not much has changed in 6,000 years. I believe, sir, that they also have a number of celebrity guests from the anime field in for interviews. Hello, where's my autograph book? That's the spirit, sir. 918TheFan.com as the kids say, check it out. Hey, everybody, we're back, and we're still here with my guest. I haven't chased them away this time, and I mean it. We tested it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm here. I'm still here. 
We were actually uh, talking behind the scenes a little bit about uh, your upcoming projects. Can you tell any of our listeners if you have any? Well, there's nothing, uh, nothing specific. You know, I'm, I'm based in New York, and uh, I'm uh, always involved in uh, theater projects to, to some degree or another. Um, and, and lately it's been little things, and I've been spending a fair amount of time writing, um, which is great. Uh, so I don't have anything, uh, you know, major and specific to promote, um, you know, other than, I mean, I'm... I'm hopeful, as we were maybe talking about earlier, that uh, that I might hear from the uh, rising game. We'll see. Um, but uh, at the moment, there's not anything specific to promote that I'm working on. I can understand that. And hopefully, you know, something comes down the pipes or something along those lines. And is there any way, you know, the fans can keep updated? Do you do the Twitter, the Facebook thing, or is that beyond you? <laughs> no, no. I, You know, I, I, I don't have a Twitter thing. Not yet, at, at least. I may try and explore that this summer. That, that hasn't started yet. Um, and I I have a sort of a personal page on Facebook. Um but I and I, I have not yet set up a fan page. I suppose I ought to do that. Um, there is an Otacon fan page, but I, I, re- I don't have anything to do with that, other than the fact that I sort of signed up just because I was curious to see what was going on with Otacon. Um, but, uh, um, you know, and, and the personal Facebook fan page, I, I try and, I mean, the personal Facebook page, I try and keep to people that I actually know. Um, so, but certainly, you know, if anything's going on, uh, the word will get out. Uh, we, we will find a way to, to blast the word out to the world. <laughs> oh, definitely. And now I'm wondering, are you a con guy at all? Do you travel to any of the anime, comic cons, anything like that? You know, I never have. And, I mean, David Hayter, you know, does a lot. And I think Quentin does, too. I, I've never actually done that, and I sort of would like to. So I, I ought to explore that. Um, because I think it'd be great to get out there and, and uh, see what's going on and meet more of the fans. So maybe the next one I will I will try and engineer a way to get there. Well, actually, I think there's one sort of in your area, since you said you were in New York, there's uh, the New York Anime Festival. Um, yeah. We're actually heading to that one, trying to get a booth and all that fun stuff. So that's uh, one that I know is in your area, but I'm all the way over here in Nevada, so I don't know much that's going up up there. Well, no, that's fantastic. I didn't know that. I'll I'll look into that. And, um, uh, you know, when you come to New York, let me know. Awesome. Come by and say hi. I mean, we found that uh, for conventions, at least, We've talked to so many voice actors that you kind of have to advertise yourself to the conventions to go. I don't sure. know what's up with that, but they don't sure. really come to specific people and like, hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's right. I think, you know, because, I mean, it's such, to some degree, well, certainly anime, but it, it's such a huge thing. I mean, and it covers so many different forms of media um, that I think the umbrella is pretty big. There are probably a lot of people involved. Oh, definitely. I mean, there's there's a saying I've heard for a really long time that all anime fans are video game fans, but not all video game fans are anime fans. Yes. And, and so, you know, an in, in anime actual convention will ha- encompass so many different types. You know, the video game people, the cosplayers, the people there just to buy things, the anime yeah. people, et cetera, et cetera. Sure, sure, definitely. But, yeah, that would be very neat if, uh, you know, your fans could get a chance to interact with you and hopefully not uh, glomple doom you <laughs> yeah hopefully <laughs> and now i'm curious um with about uh, peace walker because i know that all of our fans are sort of interested in that uh hopefully you'll get a chance as well to play that right yes i, I very much want to i i mean it, it just came out and i've not had a chance to go get it but um that's the next step often they send it to me but they're really they're, they tend to be really behind in sending it to me so i think i may have to go out and buy it Oh, no, I can understand. (laughs) I will say, though, that um, we do have a tradition here on 91.8 The Fan before we let you go, and I was wondering if you'd like to participate. Sure, what is it? We ask everybody who comes on if they'd be willing to say a line for us, and we do it live on air for all the bloopers. Oh, sure. (laughs) Uh, Well, um, boy, of course, I don't have a script in front of me, but, you know... uh, do you want sort of any Otacon line, or do you have a specific line? We ask a specific uh, line to uh, the voice actors, so if you want to write it down, you can, because I know yeah. a lot of voice actors do that. Tell me what you want to hear. 
We basically just want you to say, my name is, and then you fill in your name. I do okay. this, you fill in what you do, and you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. Okay. Okay, 91.8 The Fan. Yeah. Okay. Whenever right. you're ready. <laughs> my name is Christopher Randolph, and I play Otacon in the Metal Gear series. And you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. See, that was perfect. That wasn't painful was at all. <laughs> okay, cool. Great. And is there anything else you want to tell the listeners out there that are fans of the series or fans of your character? Gosh, you know... Uh, Nothing specific except to just say thank you. I, I'm I'm continually impressed with the uh, you know the dedication of the fans and and uh, the way the people who have gotten involved in this game you know stay in it and uh, continue to promote it and talk about it and, and play it. I, I just think that's really wonderful. So you know keep it up, you guys. Thank you. Well, we have to thank you for bringing the character to life and uh, supplying your voice because, you know, there wouldn't be the Otacon we know and love today if it wasn't for you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> it, it was my pleasure. It's my pleasure, and I hope, I hope I get more and more opportunities. And then thank you very much for joining the show. We're going to cut out, but if you missed any of this interview, you can catch it on the website in the next few days. So keep it tuned to your favorite station, 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want, nothing you don't.